This is Grant Baldwin from ASD and welcome to another Tech Tip for the month of November. This is carrying on from last month's Tech Tip which was on how to uh, configure a March Network's IP camera. This is how to connect an IP camera to the March Network's 4000 series DVR. So the first thing we'll do is open up our admin console. We'll go to task type and go to device installation. And then we'll click on the DVR that we want to configure. Now the March Network's 4000 series DVRs are equipped with two network ports. The one that's actually built into the DVR, which is used to connect to uh, the customer's network. And obviously it has a network card um, in it as well, which is used to connect to the IP camera network, therefore segregating the two and keeping one separated from the other, as most customers don't want all the IP cameras running on the network for bandwidth uh, reasons and so on. Um, so what we have to do is we have to set the actual... Um, the actual IP address of the network card um, in the DVR and we've got to make sure that's running on the same IP range as all the cameras are. So the first thing we'll do is go to the network settings and we'll see in here we have uh, basically two network cards displayed. The first one's for the inbuilt one and should be running on the same IP range as the customer's network so they connect to it. The second one is the PC card and this should be set to the same IP range that the cameras are running on. Um, now it's obviously a good idea to have the IP range of these two different networks separate, so they're running on different IP ranges, um, so there won't be any crashes or problems uh, later on, so it's best to keep those IP ranges separate. Once we've configured the IP range for the specific card, we'll click on Apply. Now the next thing we want to do is go to the camera so we can add in our IP cameras. Now this is a 4316, so it's got eight IP cameras that you can connect to it. These uh, listings and the camera list here do not equate or um, tee up to the actual connections on the IP uh, network camera card itself. So to add an IP camera, we'll click on the camera. We'll click on the camera brand and we'll choose the type of IP camera we want to add. For this one, uh, March Networks. We'll choose the model. So for this one, we're going to choose a March uh, Networks Megapix 1080p camera. We'll put in the IP address, so 192.168.3.65. We'll put in the login, which is admin, without a password, as it is for all March Network's uh, IP device, uh, sorry, devices. And we'll click OK. Let's say the configuration is uh, connecting. I'll come up connecting to the camera, and we should get an image from that specific camera appearing. And we'll also give you the firmware, the port it's running on, the serial number, uh, the make model. Now from here we can click on advanced and we can also see the current data rates that camera. So it's running at 700 uh, uh, kilobits per second, its average is 770 and its max so far is 793. From here we can reset the data rates if we want to. It also gives us some information about the specific camera and if the connection is okay. We can also, if we want to, choose to reconnect to the camera if we've disconnected it for whatever reason. We can also click on the web page which will bring up the web page for that specific IP camera uh, if we want to make any changes to the IP camera itself. So I'll just click back on basic. Now once we've got the camera set up here, we know that the camera is actually connected to the March Network's DVR and now we can um, adjust some settings for it. So what we'll do is we'll go through to the task type and we'll choose device configuration. And from device configuration we'll choose on cameras and you'll see we have all our analog cameras with our IP camera listed at the bottom. Uh, to sort these out, you can click on, for example, the input type, which will sort them out by input type, uh, sorry, input name, uh, type, if you click on type, it will sort them out by the type of camera, be it analog or IP, and source, uh, camera name, and so on. Whichever one of these click on, it will sort the list accordingly. So if we click on our IP camera and view live, it will display us a live image from that particular camera. Now to give us some more room to work on, what we'll do is we'll double click at the top here, which will close that top section and give us more room to work in. Right, now we're on our IP camera. Again, from here, if you want to, you can um, access the camera's web page if you need to make any more changes on the IP camera itself. From here, we can choose uh, very few settings because most of, the, most of the settings are inherited from the IP camera itself. On some specific IP cameras, you can actually choose uh, your resolution and your quality and your frames per second from here as well as on the camera. The most important thing to remember is that if you have do, adjust any settings on here, for example like the bitrate, to make sure they match up to what you've set on the IP camera. So if you set the IP camera to use a bandwidth say 2 megabits per second 
um, at five frames per second um, at three mega, uh, megapixel resolution. Make sure that's what's set on the camera, it's exactly what's set up on the DVR or you could run into problems. The other important thing to remember is that when you um, export the config file, uh, from the March Networks DVR, it won't contain any of the settings for a particular IP camera at all. Now once we have our, our IP camera, we've adjusted the settings as we want, so if we want from here we'll choose 2 megabits per second, which is what was actually set up on the camera, and then of course we'll click apply if it's changed. We'll now need to set some actions. The other important thing to remember is that uh, when you set up an IP camera, unless you're assigned an action, that particular IP camera won't record any footage at all. So it's always important to remember that when you set up an IP camera, you have to set up an action with it in order to record some video from it. So for example, from here we can click on Continuous Trigger, we can click Add, uh, Retain Evidence Data, and we can choose from IP Camera 1. And the other important thing to remember is that with IP cameras you can't do any frame thinning. So you can't thin out the rates like you can with normal analog cameras in the March Networks DVR. They'll only come through at the frame rate that the camera's programmed to. As such, there's no use to uh, basically storing them in an extended term. So we always advise to store IP cameras in the long term as you're not going to get any benefits from it. storing them in an extended term except under specific um, circumstances. So we'll click Apply Settings. And now we can see that uh, on our continuous trigger, we're going to retain evidence from that IP camera. Now, if we wanted to set up a video motion detection on our IP camera, it's done exactly the same way as per a normal camera. So I'll just remove this one and we'll add in a VND detection. So we want to detect events. Come back to IP camera one. We want to detect motion on IP camera one. We we'll click apply. Now the actual video motion detection is set up on the camera itself and is brought through into the DVR so you don't have to set up any motion detection on the actual DVR, it's all done at the camera end. So we we'll click that, make sure that's applied. Now we'll come down our list to our IP camera. Here it is, IP camera 1, VMD. And, what we, what, and here's where we tell the camera what we want it to do when it te detects video motion. So we'll click on add click retain evidence. As before, uh, best to don't store it to long term and we want to store it from IP camera 1. From here you can also choose if you want to record video from other cameras based on motion detection from, uh, from that specific IP camera. You can choose, use the public control button down and choose other cameras you may want to record to as well. But in this case we just want to record video from that specific IP camera. We can also set pre-events and post-events exactly like IP cameras. Once we've chosen that, we'll click Apply. And now that specific camera will only record, when it, uh, will only record footage uh, when it detects motion. So again, the most important things to remember is, uh, is that the IP camera settings, um, if you go through to device management, um, sorry, device configuration and go to the summary page, and you go to um, export your config settings, it won't actually save any information about your IP cameras. If you want to um, basically have an overview of all your settings, including your IP cameras, the best thing to do is to actually save your summary sheet, which is by clicking on this button here. And this will give you this report here. And if you come down through to the bottom, you'll see it includes all the information about that specific IP camera as well. Now, the thing to check with IP cameras, especially if you have a lot connected through to a DVR, is your bandwidth limitations, as obviously that's going to have a huge effect on how your IP cameras are viewed at your client side, and that has to be taken into consideration. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, if we go back through to our cameras and click on our IP camera, you can see it's still coming through live, no problems at all. And now if you open up Live Monitoring Console or Investigator, uh, you'll be able to access that camera and uh, view recorded footage or live footage as for whatever it applies. So thanks once again uh, for uh, viewing one of our uh, new Tech Tip videos. We welcome any feedback or any new topics you want us to cover. Next week, uh, sorry, next month, we'll look at something completely new. Thanks again.